Oh, back to Master of Universe, Twilight Fan Fiction, Chapter Four. Miss Swan, what a pleasant surprise! He stares at me, his gaze unwavering and intense. Holy crow! What the hell is he doing here? Looking all tussled here and outdoorsy in a grey chunky knit sweater, tight jeans and walking boots. I think my mouth was popped open and I'm having difficulty locating my brain and my voice, which have disengaged from the rest of my body. Mr. Colin, I whispered, because that's all I can manage. There's a ghost of a smile in his face, and his eyes are alight with humor, as if he's enjoying some private joke. I was in the air, he says quietly, by way of explanation. I'm hiking. I need a few things. It's a pleasure to see you again, Miss Swan. His voice is warm and husky, like dark melted chocolate fudge caramel, or something. I shake my head slightly. My heart is pounding a frantic tattoo. Okay, tattoo. And for some reason, I'm blushing fiercely under his steady scrutiny. I am so thrown by seeing him standing before me. My memory of him does not do him justice. He's not the looking. He's the epitome of male beauty, dazzling, and he's here, here in Newton's camping paradise. Go figure. Finally, my cognitive function is restored, and reconnected with the rest of my body. Bella, my name's Bella. I'm Marta Crowley. What can I help you with, Mr. Colin? He smiles, and again, it's like he's privy to some big secret. It is so discerning, disconcerting. I take a deep breath, put on my professional. I've worked in this camping shop for years, face it. I can do this. Well, a map of the local area for starters, he murmurs. Okay, I know where those are. I try for not challenge as I move around the counter, but really, I'm concentrating so hard on not falling over my own feet. My lay, the consistency of jello. I'm aware that I'm wearing my best jeans and I'm inappropriately pleased that I decide to wear them this morning. It's just jeans, honey. The maps are over here. Follow me, I say too brightly. Lead away, he murmurs, <laughs> gesturing his long fingered, beautiful, manicured hand. With my heart f practically strangling me because in my throat trying to escape from my mouth, I head down one of the aisles to the map section. Why is he here, here at Newton, and from a very tiny underused part of my brain, properly located at the base of my medulla ab uh, oblongata, comes the dot, he's here to see you. No way, I dismiss it. dismiss it immediately. Why would this beautiful, powerful, urban man want to see me? The ideal is utterly preposterous, and I kick it out of my head. Whereabouts were you thinking of hiking? My voice is slightly too high, like I've got my finger trapped in a door or something. Shout somewhere in pictures, picture square and quiet in the surrounding neighborhood. He waves his hand vaguely. I was visiting the university farming division. I am founding some research there in crop rotation and soil science. See, not here to see you at all. That means part of my brain loud and proud and the frontal lobe of my cerebrum sneers at me. 
I flush as I think of my foolishness. Is this all part of your feed the world plan? Something like that, he acknowledged, and his lips crook up in a half smile. Well, these maps in this section here are the local air. I point to my map display. Part of me can't help feeling that he should have some kind of fancy GPS tracking device for all of this sort of stuff. His fingers trail through the map display and for some inexplicable reason, I have to look away. He's trying to seduce you, woman. This is the one, I think. He plugs one hand, one out and hand it to me. It's a local map that shows the Willamette Stone State Heritage Site. This trail is quite touristy, I offer by way of a warning. Hmm, I like something more private, he says, and he's gazing at me, green eyes concentrating hard. I flush. What the hell does he have this effect on me? I feel like I'm 14 years old. Gucha? Uh, Gauche. Always out of the place. Here, this trail is more secluded. It's north of the Willamette, but it's still the forest park. I hand him another map, scrabbling around my equilibrium. Equilibrium. Our fingers touch very briefly. <gasps> and the current is there, sparking through me. I gasp and voluntarily as I feel it all the way to somewhere dark and unexplored deep in my belly. I think she is hungry. Have you been? Yeah. As I shake my head because I can talk again. I'm on shifting tectonic plates. Try and be cool, Bella. My tortured subconscious begs. I think we both know that walking is not my thing, Mr. Colin. I cannot look at him in the eye. He's just too gorgeous to be hold. What is your thing, Isabella? He's asked softly. That secret smile is back. Books? I squeeze the word out and the inside. That strange place in my medulla of Balaganda is firing synaptic impulse at me, screaming, You, you are my thing. I slapped it down instantly, mortified that my psyche is having ideas above its station. What kind of books? He cocked his head to one side. Why he's so interested? Oh, you know, the usual, the classic, mainly British literature. <laughs> and he wops his chin with his long index finger and his dumps as he contemplates my answer. Or he's just very bored and trying to hide it. Is there any else you need? I have to get off the subject. His hands on his face are so begorling. Well, I don't know. What would you recommend? Pants, I reply. And I know I'm no longer screaming what's coming out of my mouth. He raised an eyebrow at me, amused again. Denim is no good for hiking, I hastily explained. If your jeans get wet, they're heavy, don't dry, and they chaff it. And you'll lose body heat as soon as I say the word body. I can feel the color in my cheeks rising again. Well, I wouldn't want any chaffing, he murmurs dryly. I'd better get some pants. What would you recommend? Uh, you want something lightweight and breathable. Okay, eat on, Miss Swan. Oh no, I had not bargained for this. The clothing section is this way, I practically whimper. Mm -hmm. What follows has to be the most uncomfortable experience in my camping sales career, the neither of my time and Newton's 
I had captured a Greek god in our change rooms, and I'm handing him lightweight walking trousers. How did this happen? By the time his children appeared at our navy bloom, how do I look in these? I'll wear them on, Miss Son. I am the color of the communist manifesto. Do you need anything else? I squeak. He ignores my question. How's the article coming on? He asks me a normal question away from all the innuendo and confusing double talk and the change of uh, the plant pants. A question I can't answer. I grasped it with two hands tightly with a lift raft going for honesty. I'm not whiting it. Grosley. Miss Hell. My roommate, she's the writer, and she's very happy with it. She's the editor of the magazine, and of course she was devastated that she couldn't do the interview in person. She got nothing from that interview. I feel like I come up for ear, a normal conversation. Her only concern is that she doesn't have any original photograph of you. He weighs in our at me. What sort of photograph does she want? A brief photograph. That's that's the photograph you want. Okay, I hadn't factored in this response. I shake my head because I don't know. Well, I intended to be in the area tomorrow. Perhaps he trails off. You'll be willing to attend a photo shoot. My voice is squeaky again. Rose will be in seventh heaven if I pull this off. And you might see him again tomorrow. The dark place at the base of my brain whispers seductively at me. I dismiss the thought of all the silly ridiculous. I think Rose will be delighted. If I can find a photographer. I'm so pleased that I unconsciously smile at him broadly. His voice parts slightly like he's taking a sharp intake of breath. And he blinks at me. Looking lost for a fraction of a second, and the earth shift slightly on its axis, the tectonic plates sliding into a new position. Oh my, Edward Collins lost the look. Let me know if you need me tomorrow. He reaches into his back pocket and pulls out his wallet. Here's my card. It has my cell phone number on it. You'll need to call before 10 in the morning. Okay. I grin up at him. Well, it's going to be so thrilled. Bella! Mike Newton has appeared out of the ether at the end of the aisle. He's the Newton sons. Home from the Princeton. It's such a surprise to see him. Uh, excuse me for a minute, Mr. Colling. He frowns as I turn away from him. Mike has been a good buddy. Someone I see intimately when he's home from college and in this strange moment that I'm having with this rich, powerful, awesomely, off the scale attractive control freak Colin. It's great to see someone who's normal. He hugs me hard, surprisingly hard. She knows that he's controlling. Cool. Bella, hi, it's so good to see you. Say enthusiastically hello Mike how are you are you home for your mom's birthday yep you're looking well bells really well he found sorry examining me he releases me but keeps a possessive arm trap over my shoulder and I shuffle and burst from foot to foot Mike has always been over familiar but it's good to see him I glance up at Edward Collins, and he's watching us like a hawk. His green eyes herded, speculative, his mouth in a hard and passive line. He's changed from the really attentive customer to someone else, some cold and distant. Mike, I'm with a customer, someone you should meet. I say to try and fuse the antagonist look in Collins' eyes. I drag Mike over to me him. Can I introduce you to Edward Cullen? Why you make yourself like he's a crested? 
Mike and Edward eye each other up, and the atmosphere is suddenly arctic. Uh, Mike, this is Edward calling. Is calling. This is Mike Newton. His parents own the place for some irrational reason. I feel I have to explain a bit more. I've known Mike ever since I began working here, though we don't see each other often. Mike's back from Princeton, where he's studying business administration. I'm babbling. Stop now. Why does it feel so awkward, Mr. Newton? Edward holds his hand out. His look unreadable. Colin. Mike returns his handshake. Wait up. Not the Edward Colin of Colin Holdings. Mike goes from surly to awe in less than nanosecond. Edward smiles politely at him, but his smile doesn't reach his eyes. Wow, is there anything I can get you? Isabel has it covered, Mr. Newton. He's been very attentive. His expression is passive, cool, but his words, it's like he's saying something else. It's baffling. Cool. Mike responds. Catch you later, Bells. Okay, Mike. I watch him leave from the stockroom. Is there anything else you need, Mr. Collins? No, just the map and the pants. I think the boots too, so boots isn't suitable for hiking. Because the beginning of this chapter, you have boots. I take a deep breath and head for the trail. I am aware that I have managed to stay upright the entire time mentally. I award myself a small pat on the back. Only there, I ring up the map and the trousers. There will be fifty-three dollars, please. I glance up at him, and I wish I had it. He's watching me so closely, green eyes, intense and blazing. It's unnerving. It's uncomfortable. Would you like a bag for your jeans and the map? I asked. I I take his credit card. No thanks, Isabella. His tongue carries my name. And once again, my heart is frantic, and I can hardly breathe. So you'll call me if you want me to do the photo shoot. I nod because、I、have been rendered speechless. Again, I give him back his card. Good. Until tomorrow, maybe, Miss Swan. Oh, and Isabella, I'm glad Miss Hill couldn't do the interview. He turns and strides purposefully out of the shop, his jeans slung over his shoulder, leaving me a quivering mass of raging female hormones. It takes several minutes of staring at the closed door, through which he's just left for me to return to planet Earth. Okay, I like him. There, I admit it to myself. I cannot hide from my feelings anymore. You don't like him. You're just attracted to him sexually, sexually, lusting, baby. This was what was so confusing that I didn't understand, because I never felt like this before. I found him attractive. See, see. See what I say? Very attractive. It's a lost cause. I know, and I sigh with bittersweet regret. But I can't admire him from afar. Surely, no harm will come of that. And if I can find a photographer, I can do some serious admiring tomorrow. I bite my lip in anticipation and find myself grinning like a schoolgirl. Now I need to phone Rose and find a photographer. Hmm. And that's the end of chapter four. I mean, you could just buy a camera and just take picture. You don't need a professional photographer. All you need is just photograph and edit it. Just downgrade the color, and he's already look good.